I want to start off by thanking Bill Dempsey and the Sycamore Trust Board for selecting Mackenzie and myself for the Student Award. I've known and admired the Sycamore Trust for several years now, and they've been a huge help to me in several different ways, from phone calls and email exchanges with Bill to providing my club with a base of alumni support for petitions, fundraising, and letter mailing. I've only completed four years of an undergraduate education, and I have no real world experience, uh, which makes me the least qualified person in this room to speak with any authority. <laughs> but as a student, I can provide you with the story of my experience at Notre Dame and how my love for our, un our ladies university and for all the students here motivated me and so many of my friends and colleagues to start a nationwide movement to filter pornography on the campus Wi-Fi. I fell in love with Notre Dame like most people do, watching Notre Dame football lose game after game. <laughs> it's, it's the kind of sickness that many are familiar with, where the more Notre Dame loses, the more we want them to win. The sickness got worse after watching Rudy and New Rock Neal American, and after my three older siblings all came here, I thought it would only make sense that I would do the same. When, I, when it came time for me to make the decision about college, I realized Notre Dame was just as sound in academics as it should have been on the football field. So I came to Notre Dame. On top of the classes I took and the friends I made, I wanted to do something to promote marriage and family here at Notre Dame. The perfect fit for this goal was Students for Child-Oriented Policy. Uh, the student organization has focused on changing the culture at Notre Dame by promoting marriage, family, and int integrity for the past six years, and uh, Michael Bradley and Tiernan Kane are both here, and they're the co-founders. Uh, the club was initially denied recognition, as Bill said, uh, by the university for promoting traditional marriage, so we were well aware of the administration's stance on what we value. Thanks to the friendship and assistance and guidance from Dr. Daniel Mark, the former chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, and Dr. Philip Munoz, the head of the Constitutional Studies in Tocqueville Institute, it became very clear to me that as a Notre Dame student, I have a unique opportunity to advocate for some serious issues and get involved in the culture wars. And one of the most important battles I found is against the rampant industry of pornography. On campus, I've met several people who have struggled with an addiction to this pervasive drug. Pornography harms users' ability to form healthy relationships and it hardens women by fostering a culture of exploitation and violence. But while it's no secret that many students consume pornography, what mo most people don't acknowledge is that many students want to stop. Knowing how ubiquitous and damaging pornography is, several students and I decided to fight this problem. We knew Notre Dame had a policy prohibiting students from using campus Wi-Fi to access pornography. This accords with both the Catechism of the Catholic Church and also the USCCB's declaration that pornography is morally offensive. But unlike other Catholic universities, Notre Dame does not enforce its own policy. This is not just a Catholic issue. Major companies like McDonald's, Subway, and even Starbucks have implemented Wi-Fi filters. Nevertheless, Notre Dame has ignored not only the example of other Catholic institutions in filtering Wi-Fi, including Holy Cross, but also its own community. And several other students and I wrote a petition requesting a filter. The the petition garnered 2,400 signatures from students, faculty, staff, and friends of Notre Dame. A third-party petition received over 12,500. To further encourage the university to enforce its own policies, we wrote a letter to the school newspaper signed by 81 male students. A supportive letter signed by 68 Notre Dame women soon followed. The letters went viral. Nightline, ABC, The Daily Beast, National Review, and other news organizations turned our efforts into a national conversation. Our inboxes were flooded with emails from students throughout the United States who wanted to take similar action at their universities. The national organization, Enough is Enough, sent a letter to Notre Dame administration supporting the campaign. Despite this wave of support, Notre Dame has refused to implement the filter. Um, I actually have a, a funny kind of tangent story here, but Father Jenkins has been aware of what we have been doing uh, since Sean Evans, Sagop's previous president, sent him a letter requesting that the filter uh, be implemented last year. Uh, the first time I spoke with Father Jenkins about the filter was actually during yoga. And I, I, 
I received an email that said, Coach Brian Kelly and President Jenkins will be joining the O'Neill guys for a special yoga and yogurt event. Uh, naturally, I thought the email was a joke, uh, but <laughs> I signed up anyway in the off chance that this was a real thing. Sure enough, the following Monday, I found myself with 20 sweaty O'Neill guys and Brian Kelly and Father Jenkins on the mats in the rock doing Warrior One. <laughs> After Jenkins started up a conversation with me, I realized that the only way I could make this situation more awkward was to talk to him about pornography. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so I brought up the, the filter and explained how this could help so many guys on O'Neill and all over campus. He was very receptive and told us to keep up the campus conversation. After the media storm, we met with Father Jenkins in a formal setting and explained how beneficial, technologically simple, and inexpensive the process would be. But the answer was no. Jenkins told us that a filter would inhibit the faculty's ability to participate in academic research. He told us that it could be a constraint on freedom and that it is not the university's role to force moral behavior on students. In the middle of all of this, I received, <laughs> I received an email from the, uh, the president of the uh, Love and Fidelity Network, an umbrella organization of SCOP, asking me if I'd be willing to be nominated for USA's Gentleman of the Year Award. <laughs> and I agreed, thinking that the voting process would be small just among my friends and family. Uh, <laughs> the next day, an email blast goes out from the Sycamore Trust saying in all caps, vote for Jim. <laughs> and my phone proceeds to explode with every person I've ever met in my life telling me they voted for me. <laughs> and after a few subsequent emails from Sycamore, including my favorite, with the all caps subject, the Pope says vote for Jim. <laughs> <laughs> my nomination dominated the competition and launched me into the fame and fortune, the likes of which only a few can experience in their lifetime. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions on how to be a gentleman, feel free to ask me because thanks in part to Bill Dempsey and the Sycamore Trust, I am now officially an expert. <laughs> but back to the filter. The problem with pornography extends beyond the individual. It is a community-wide issue that calls for institutional leadership to promote public health and well-being. If Notre Dame truly finds pornography abhorrent, it should not be providing it on its own dime. The university has already demonstrated a willingness to shield students from offensive material by covering campus murals of Columbus. <laughs> Notre Dame needs to be consistent in how it deals with morally degrading content. It disheartens me that my university has called, has ignored a call from 1,000 plus people to adopt a simple measure that would promote a campus culture of human dignity and respect. But even more disheartening is the inconsistent, illogical way Notre Dame has handled the situation. If this university is to live up to its mission of intellectual and moral integrity, it must not only recognize moral depravity wherever it exists, but it should also take a strong stance against the depravity and help students do the same. I love Notre Dame, and I love the people here that make this place the world's preeminent Catholic university. I will forever be in debt to this place for finding me the most amazing woman in the world, who I'll be marrying in November. The decision was, <laughs> was easy given the fact that she was the editor-in-chief of the Irish Rover and prior recipient of the Sycamore Trust Student Award. <laughs> and, but I, I'm, I'm humbled and honored to receive that same award. Uh, thank you for all the good work you commit yourselves to every day. And may we never give up this noble fight. Our university, our church, and our world need it and we'll be all the better for it. Thank you. <laughs>